I'm going to have to make a decision, and I only hope to God that it's the right decision. But I would say, without question, it's the biggest decision I've ever had to make. However, some health experts and governors have pushed back on a possible May 1st target date. I want to bring in now Fox News chief political anchor Brett Baer, also anchor and executive editor of Special Report. Great to see you today. So, you know, there are kind Paris. of two headlines that are working out there, Brett. And I, I want to hit this first one with Dr. Fauci. We talked about it last hour on, on Outnumbered. And the comment that I made was, you know, how much of this is really helpful? And, and of course, that's also a question. Yeah, none, uh, really, in the big picture. And two, uh, the, we've seen this story about, you know, uh, President Trump doesn't like Fauci. Fauci is criticizing President Trump. It goes up and down and up and down. And if you look at the whole context of that soundbite, uh, Fauci is asked a hypothetical, what if? Um, you yeah. know, the U.S. had done a complete lockdown. Well, the problem was is that we, to your point, didn't have that information. Fauci himself at the end of January was saying the risk to U.S. citizens was very low um, in interviews. And mm -hmm. the real blame, and there's a lot of stories about the blame to go around, the real blame is on China. Something else Fauci said this weekend, that the original data out of China led them astray as far as how contagious it was, and how many cases there were. Yeah, it's so informative. I think that's very informative to tell people, too, that it wasn't just the lack of detail or information coming from other countries dealing with this early on, the first of which was China, but it was also misinformation that we now know from even our own intelligence community. Right. And, you know, that falls again right on China as far as what was coming out. Now, the TikTok about what happened when with the administration, you know, is, mm -hmm. is illuminating in some points and clearly other things could have happened. But when the president shut down the travel from China, um, he rightly points out often that uh, he was criticized for doing that. Uh, that bought a lot of time as far as having to deal with this, this virus. I think there's a lot of things we don't know about the, origin, the, the original point in Wuhan. Uh, mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of things that we don't know is why Shanghai and Beijing did not get as much uh, of this fallout as Milan or New York City. And um, mm -hmm. I think we have a lot of investigating to do. Yeah, we do. And as a journalist, of course, we'll, we'll do that. Um, you know what? I, I do want to hit this one thing. The New Yorker is featuring Dr. Fauci in an article this month calling him America's doctor. Uh, you know, people from all walks, all, you know, political stripes have said that you need somebody to lead. This is the man that they have said that they trust. Is it damaging that the president tweets something that has a hashtag fire? Fauci in it? Or, or do people just kind of calculate it, Brett, as, okay, that's just more stuff on Twitter? Well, I think the president does a lot of those things that have a lot of even his supporters scratching their heads. I'm sure he'll be asked about retweeting something that says fire Fauci at the task force uh, briefing today. Uh, I'm sure he's going to be pressed on that. And I'm sure the answer is going to be, I respect this. I, I respect him. And I'm going to use the data from Fauci and Birch to, to make my decision about opening the country. I, I think the president's inclination is always to defend because he's spent three years under attack in his mind uh, from all corners. Mm. And that retweet was more about, see, he said it too at the end of January. Right after that, I closed down travel from China. Yeah, you, you know, the other thing that's happening today is this New York Times article. And, uh, and you know, the, the president doing what he does. He'll spar. He'll fire back. And that's what he's doing today at the New York Times, um, saying this is over a report accusing him of ignoring his advisor's warnings about COVID-19 and moving too slowly on imposing those social distancing guidelines. However, the president tweeted the New York Times story is a fake, just like the paper itself. I was criticized for moving too fast when I issued the China ban long before most others wanted to do so. And Brett, you brought that up as an example of one of the steps that he took. Again, you know, witnessing another public fight. And, and I just toss to you and, and almost want to ask, what do people, what are they supposed to make of it? Well, it's just a lot of uh, back and forth, and it'll continue. There is 
criticism to go around. Clearly, the administration at some points could have done different things. Clearly, there's going to be this, at the end of this, a look back. But I think the majority of sentiment across the country is we're in the middle of this. Let's get through it. Mm -hmm. Let's help small businesses and companies survive this. Let's make sure as, as few people as possible die because of this and get to the other side and then do the look back. Um, and obviously, the president has always been a counterpuncher, and he's going to continue to be. So, you know what? You brought up an interesting point, though, because he, he does defend. He does counterpunch. I, I ask, and I've wanted to ask you this for a long time, so I'm just going to put it out there. When, when we watch those news conferences in the afternoons and we see people who are journalists like you and I are, Brett, asking the same questions kind of over and over and, and having those moments of contention, have we moved to, to a point now where maybe that only works for the president? Clearly, he thinks it works because he thinks uh, that that sparring is good to shore up his supporters. Um, I think that as a journalist sitting there, you want to advance the ball on substance, not get in a fight with the president of the United yes. States. That doesn't mean that you don't ask pointed questions, but you ask them in a way to, to mm -hmm. advance the ball, as, as you know, Harris. And... Um, and sometimes, because of the contentious nature of it, you're right. It, he sees it as a plus. A lot of people look at those things and say, this is too long. He could have done it in half the time. And I'm not saying that because it happens in my hour all the time. I'm saying just because mm. his supporters and others say, um, you know, he could have done the same thing in half the time.